Good morning. This is Audrey Prater, and um, I made her do this this morning. <laughs> um, she might say some of this in her uh, talk, so sorry if I'm overstepping. She, uh, we became friends. Uh, our, she has been brought to Artesia through her husband, who is right now a traveling physical therapist. And we're just so thankful that God did that because we have cultivated a friendship and I just enjoy her and I'm so excited for you this morning. So I'm going to pray for you. Okay. <laughs> Dear Lord, we just come before you and we just thank you so much for Audrey and we thank you for her saying yes. <laughs> and we just ask you to calm her nerves and we know that what you have put on her heart is God breathed and she will speak to us through you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Hi. As Jesse said, my name is Audrey Prater. Um, just a little history for me. Like she said, I'm not an Artesian native. I am originally from Rockwall, Texas. Yeah, there we go. Rock, this is where Rockwall is. It's a little. It's 30 minutes east of Dallas. And I went to Hardin Simmons University in Abilene, Texas. And my husband and I have been there until we started traveling about two years ago. Um, for his job, like she said, he's a traveling physical ther therapist, which is why we're here in Artesia. I have known him since kindergarten. Oh, you can tap twice now. There's Abilene. That's like 30 minutes. Okay, twice now. There we go. I've known him since kindergarten. We've been together since eighth grade. This is us at freshman homecoming. Um, and then we got married after he graduated. Yep, there we are. Um, we got married. Um, he graduated from Louisiana Tech, and I had one semester left at Hardin Simmons. So we were little babies when we got married. Um, we have just celebrated our 10th wedding anniversary in December. We have three beautiful girls, Lydia, who is six. We've got Murphy, who is four, and Eliza, who is two. Oh my goodness. So that's, those are my three girls. Um, you can tell what we're talking about, so you can just leave it there for a while. So that's our family. Our current fun fact is that we live in a camper. Um, we live in a camper because we've been traveling all over the country. We've been to North Dakota, back down to Texas, over to Mississippi, and now here in New Mexico. We are truly loving our experience, but we are definitely looking forward to being in a house sometime in the near future, but who knows? We thought we would be done traveling before the school year started, but here we are still traveling and in New Mexico. So when I was first asked to do an intro, I was like, yeah, I'll think about it. But then in the back of my head, I was like, yeah, no, I do not do public speaking at all. Like, no lie, I cried at my first speech in high school. I don't do public situations. But then I was asked again by Jesse, <laughs> And I was like, well, maybe this is God's way of being like, joke's on you. You are totally getting up, on the, up there and speaking. But then my question was, what on earth am I going to talk about? All the other ladies who have come up here and have they've had awesome stories or great topics, and I'm just a plain Jane stay-at-home mom who lives one day at a time. Well, after praying about it, trying to discern what God wanted me to talk about, the word waiting kept coming to me. And I realized I am in a season of waiting, which is hard, not always fun, and let's be honest, I like having a plan. And you would think after being on the road for two years and that plan after plan, was thrown out the window because of different circumstances, I would have learned by now that God's plan is way better than my own. But since we are human, those human tendencies tend to get in the way sometimes and we forget God's promise to us. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope in a future, Jeremiah 29, 11. I mean, let's be real, this is a Bible verse we usually learn at the beginning of our walk with the Lord. But it's funny how Satan has a way of creeping into our minds during those low moments. Anyways, a few examples of why I feel like we are in a season waiting. We originally thought we would start traveling in 2020, and then bam, COVID hits. <laughs> and almost all traveling PT contracts were canceled. And so God knew that we still had a desire to travel, but he said, let's wait a little longer. And it was such a blessing because my husband was able to still keep his job. He's clearly the only one that works. I'm a stay-at-home mom. And so God knew that we needed to not be traveling at that moment. Um, and so it was almost a year to the day that we originally thought we would start traveling that we ended up traveling. Um, next, the traveling life of a physical therapist is kind of sporadic. You sign a 13-week contract, and you can either ask to stay, be asked to stay, or you can say, yeah, 13 weeks is good enough. So you typically don't know if you're not going to stay. You don't know within 
Usually you wait about four to five weeks before you even start looking for your next place. So the closest we ever got to being done with the contract and wondering where we were going was about two weeks, um, which, you know, that's a little nerve wracking when you have kids and you're trying to prep them to where you're going and you're like, we don't know yet. So that's fun. Um, but our constant during these last two years is God knows. He has the perfect plan in place and we will look back one day and see God's hand in every place that we have lived, every person we have connected with, and how he has impacted our lives. This is what my husband and I remind each other when we are sitting on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere, Colorado, with um, a completely dead truck, or in the middle of Shreveport as our camper decides to blow its leaf springs going over a pothole on the highway. Let's just say we've had a few of our travel plans get derailed because of car or camper issues. Well, we moved back to Artesia, I mean, we moved to Artesia back in July. We were hoping to be here until December because our oldest daughter, Lydia, started kindergarten this year. And I was just praying she could be in one class for at least just one semester. It's unheard of to be a traveler and stay in a place longer than six months usually. That's usually about how long you can stay in a place. Um, and two days before school started, my husband found out that here his contract in Artesia was not only going to be over because they had found somebody to hire, it was going to be ending a week earlier. So now my kid was only gonna be here in Artesia for five weeks and I was devastated as a mom. Cause I was like, great, well, should we even put her here? She's gonna get, you know, it's brand new, new school, new everything. But we prayed and thankfully my husband got a position in um, up in Roswell and that we had, he had gotten it for December. And now it has been extended until the end of the school year. So yay. Um, so. We were able to, to extend, um, but um, we had a plan, and there was reason that we had a plan to be back in Abilene in January. But why, why, why did we wanna be back in Abilene in January so bad? Well, I was supposed to get pregnant back in August, or at least we had hoped. See, all, sorry, now I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> I don't like it emotional. <laughs> See, all three of our girls took two months or less to get pregnant with. Oh, this is not fun, guys. <laughs> Anyways, they all have birthdays in January, February, March, and so we were shooting for April. I mean, come on, that's a perfect plan, right? Um, anyways, that's what we do. We like to plan. Um, well, as you can see, that obviously hasn't happened yet. Um, I will get back to that in a second. The other reason we were planning on being in Abilene is because my husband was just starting to apply. Well, I say he just, he tried to apply last year and in, didn't work, but he's trying to apply to be a physical therapist in the army. And we knew that if he was, we were, we are going to know hopefully that he will either be selected or not selected by April. So we are waiting to see where God is going to lead us here in the next couple of months. Back to the baby. In my mind, we needed to have a baby in April because that meant Kevin was gonna be there because if he, he was going to get in the army, there's no way he's not. He's too smart, he's too good of a physical therapist. So for seven months, I worked myself up because that was the plan. My plan was getting thrown out the window and it was hard. It was really hard because I wasn't seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And those fears have turned from when is this baby going to be born to are we even going to get to have another one? So, um, let me see where I'm at because now I can't see my paper. <laughs> <laughs> um, so most people's response to, you know, well, yeah, you can have another baby. You can always adopt. And my response is always, I sure know that. I'm actually adopting myself. Um, so my parents, um, they waited seven years before they got my older sister. So not only I know that we haven't been waiting that long, but I've also been dealing with the guilt of like even saying it's taking forever because my own mother couldn't have kids. Um, so I have close friends that have struggled with their infertility and I'm over here with three beautiful kids just wanting more. So I feel a little selfish, which I know it's not true, it's different circumstances, but that's my reality right now. So Satan continued to creep in. Pregnancy has become a constant on my mind. I felt like every second of every day, I wondered if I was pregnant, are we getting pregnant? Is me thinking about causing, uh, me thinking about getting pregnant, causing me not to get pregnant? Why are we not getting pregnant? What is causing us not to get pregnant? Is it because I'm stressed? Is me being stressed causing me, 
Is, is me being stressed about being stressed the issue? <laughs> I mean, you guys know the woman's mind. It just goes on and on. <laughs> so on and on it went. And then at my annual in January, I was told what every other woman is told. We won't do anything until the year mark. We know you can get pregnant, so we aren't worried. If you can imagine, I was a little upset. Um, is my mask going? Okay. okay, I put specific stuff on, but anyway. Um, anyways, if you can imagine, I was a little upset at that response after expressing my concerns. I mean, come on, I can clearly get pregnant fast and something must be wrong, but still no concerns in their part. I have talked to countless friends and each one has been so encouraging. I am continuously reminded God has a plan. God knows the desires of our hearts. God's plans are far bigger and better than our own. God listens to our prayers. Um, I have been lifted up so much in prayer and been sent Bible verses, but those constant reminders became hard. Not because I did not believe them. I do. I know God's plans are better. But I was getting weary. I'm not going to lie. Every month that has passed, it gets harder and harder. And we do not know when or if we'll be blessed with another baby. Sorry. And it wasn't until I was talking to a friend and she said what everybody else says. God has a plan, and it's going to be so cool to look back and see where God's hand is in the, every aspect. But then she said what hit me. Actually, I bet it, it's been long enough. You can already look back and see part of God's sovereign plan unfolding. And that hit me so hard because I've been so focused on the failures of my own plans that I failed um, that I failed to see where God was still working. His plan was definitely better than my own. If I had gotten pregnant when I wanted to, we would not be in here in Artesia. Um, we would have gotten, we've gone back to Abilene and we would have missed out on the priceless relationships we had formed here, formed living here. Lydia would have missed out on staying in the same kindergarten class for a whole year, which like I said, is completely unheard of, with a teacher who she adores and this was something I thought was impossible. God is good, even in the valleys. God does not waste our time of waiting. He uses that time to grow us and mold us. So for the past month, I feel like the weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I'm finally giving the stress and anxiety over to God. I have hope in the waiting because God is faithful. So as we wait for a baby, as we wait to see if Kevin gets in the army, as we wait to see his plan unfold, we will continue to praise him. We will, um, we will, oh yeah, that's, that's an assistant. We will continue to come to him in prayer and pour out the desires of our hearts because we know he hears them. So we will have hope in the waiting. Okay, now here's a few verses that I, that I just found comforting. Um, I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction, you have known the distress of my soul, and you have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. The eye is wasted from grief, my soul and my body also. Psalm 31, 7 and 8. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and be friend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not, oh, fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Psalm 37, 3 through 7. And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, Make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done glorious, gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Isaiah 12, 4 through 5. And that's all I have. <laughs>